So, single legs to the mat, we're going to be using what's called the knee snatch to get to a single leg. But first, let's take a look at the position I want to arrive in when I shoot it. I'll be doing it on my lead leg side, where I'm more prepared to. So once I get in, I want to make sure that I'm wrapped all the way around the ankle, here, and that my neck is tight to his thigh. This will stop him if he scrolls on me from getting a whisk. Now, uh, a few other things that I, I we should point out. Uh, this would be wrong, because now you get an overhook when he sprawls. Here, go ahead, scroll, get to an overhook. It's not happening. To finish from here, once you arrive at this position, do not drive to your feet. People make this mistake, they get here and they want to drive up. But this position is not strong. It would be preferable from my single leg to first circle further behind, snatch it, and shelf it. If he falls, great, but if he stays up, I can come here first, all the way up to my feet, and look, I skipped that entire step of needing to run the pipe and thigh pry to deal with it between my legs. So let's stay balanced this time. If I come in here, shelf, up, boom. And it's worth taking that extra moment to get behind it to shelf it first instead. Now, the shot without the knee snatch and then with the knee snatch. Without the knee snatch, it'll look like this. I am trying to collide into a physical impact my neck right above the outside of his knee. The footwork involved, let's, uh, let's turn this way, is on my lead leg side. I'm stepping to the outside and I'm hitting a level change. So again, here, I'm now at the torpedo ready to fire, and I can fire right in. And now, let's talk a little bit about knee snatches. I can knee snatch with either hand or both hands. They're all great. I'll start with a two-handed knee snatch. Looks like this. All I'm doing is I'm pulling myself in a little bit with his knee. It forces, it causes him to do that for a moment. It's a little bit more effective. If I can get my hands to the knee snatch, I can pretty much guarantee that I'm going to get in on the shot. Same thing with the single hand. I come here and pull myself in, or even with the cross hand, pull myself into that corner position where I can look to finish. Good. I just wanted to add a few more details to our single video. Uh, stand right here. So, uh, just two language things. When we end up here, we call this our post and we call this cornering the single because by being down here, he can't sprawl and face me. Sprawl and face me, coach. Look what happens to his knee. If I was in a different position, let's say I was something very close and I was up here, he sprawls, faces me, he gets his leg back. That's why it's so important that we're cornered. Now, the reason we want to be on our post is so that way we can actively move when we're on the ground. You'll see some guys, they'll have their hands here or they're in our ball. And if he sprawls now, if I sprawl, I get extended. Come back up. If he sprawls now, sprawl. I'm on my post. The other thing that you'll notice about this is just by myself, like, if you try to move on your elbow, you're super slow. If you try to move on your knees, you're super slow. But if you try to move on one hand, I mean, I can move here really fast, and I can scramble to new positions or recover from a bad shot. So you want to be posted and cornered. And now the last thing I'm going to say is sometimes when I post the corner and I'm here and I shelf, it might be easier to just look for a far reach to just snatch that knee from behind and put it together. Depends how wide his feet are. If his legs are wide, right, and I came here, well, if he stays up and his legs are wide, I can either far reach or fine. Take it up this leg first and lock it down. So you have those two options, far reach or taking it all the way up to the lockdown position. Good.